Hello, in this tutorial we'll be learning how to create a dice game. The aim of this game is to roll a higher number than an enemy to score points. There are 10 rounds and the opponent with the highest score wins. First of all, let's print out a message telling the player to press any key to roll the dice. Let's type console.writeline, then in the brackets in speech marks let's type press any key to roll the dice. End of the line with a semicolon. As there are 10 rounds, we'll want to print this message 10 times. To do this, we'll use a for loop. Above our console.write line, let's type for, and then hit tab twice. The basic syntax of the for loop will be generated. This looks a bit complicated, so let's break it down. In this int i equals zero section, we are creating an integer called i and setting it to zero. This part is known as the initializer section and happens the first time a loop is called. In the next part, we see i is less than length. This part is known as the condition section, and the loop will keep running as long as this condition is true. For now, let's replace length with 10. Finally, on the end here, we see i++. This part is known as the iterator section, and defines what happens at the end of each loop. Here, i is increased by 1 each time. Note that i++ is the same as i equals i plus 1. So at the start we are creating an integer called i and setting it to 0. Every time the code inside the curly brackets is run and the end of the loop is reached, i is increased by 1. As long as i is less than 10, the loop will keep running. This means that our code inside the curly brackets will be run exactly 10 times. Let's then move our message to the inside of a for loop. Then when we run the program, we'll see that our message is printed out exactly 10 times. Within this for loop, we'll be inserting our code to play a single round of our game. As this loop will be run 10 times, there will be 10 rounds of our game. So next, we'll need to create an integer to hold the result of our random dice roll. We'll do this outside of our for loop. So let's create an integer called player random no. Next, we'll need to generate a random number between 1 and 6 to simulate a dice roll. To do this, at the top of our program, let's create a new random and call it random. So let's type random, random, equals new, random. This random will be in charge of generating the random numbers for us. To actually generate a random number, let's type within our loop. Player random num equals random dot next one comma seven the method next uses an inclusive lower bound and an exclusive upper bound to generate a random number therefore in the brackets we type one as a lower bound and seven as our upper bound meaning that the highest number generated will be six the random number generated will then be stored inside of our player random num integer to test if this is working let's print the number back out to ourselves Let's also add a console.re key which will wait for user input before generating a number. So below I'll press any key to roll the dice message, let's add a console.read key. And after we retrieve a random number, let's add another console.write line. Let's write you rolled a plus player random num. Let's also add a console.re key at the end of our program to make it wait until a key is pressed before the window closes if it already does not do so. So when we press enter, you can see one is rolled, when we press enter again, two, five, six, 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 one, four, three. And then the program finishes. So here we can see that the lowest number generated was a one and the highest number generated was a six. So great, we're now generating a dice roll. Next, we'll also need to generate a random number for the enemy player. We'll be playing against a computer for this example, but it's very easy to chain this game to a company for two or even more players. So once again, we'll need another integer container to hold the random number generated for the enemy. So let's come back to the top and under player random num, let's create an integer called enemy random num. Then let's go back to the code in our for loop and assign a random number to enemy random num. And let's also print out the number generated. 
So let's type binary random num equals random dot next one comma seven semicolon. Then let's write console dot write line enemy AI rolled a plus enemy random num. When we run our program again and press any key, we'll see it says we rolled a 2 and then the enemy rolled a 4, enemy rolls a 6, enemy rolls a 5. This will go on for all of the 10 rounds until you reach the end of the game. To make this a little more interesting, let's add a one second gap between generating numbers for the player and the enemy. To do this, let's come under our console dot line here and write console dot write line dot dot dot. Then beneath it, let's write system dot threading thread dot sleep one thousand. So what this code does here is it makes a thread wait for a thousand milliseconds, also equivalent to one second, before generating and displaying the enemy's number. So let's test this out and see what it looks like. So let's run our program. We see our number. One second later, we see the enemy's number. Once again, this will go on for the whole 10 rounds. And this makes our game a little more interesting as we have a time wait before we see the enemy's number. Finally, in order to score points, the player must roll a higher number than the enemy. To keep track of the player and enemy score, let's create two more integers. So let's create an integer called player points and set it to zero. And let's also create another integer called enemy points and set it to zero. Then when the player rolls a higher number than the enemy, the player will score a point. And then when the enemy rolls a higher number than the player, the enemy will score a point. If both the player and enemy roll the same number, it's a draw and neither will score a point. So let's come to the bottom of our for loop and type if player random num is greater than the enemy random num, then player points plus plus, which is the same as player points equals player points plus one. And then let's also print out a message saying player wins this round. Underneath let's use an else if and here we have if player random num is less than enemy random num then enemy will score a point and a message will also be displayed saying enemy wins this round. Finally if neither score higher than each other meaning rare to draw let's display a message saying draw. After this, but still inside the for loop, let's show the player scores. So let's write console dot write line. The score is now player plus player points plus full stop enemy plus enemy points. Also, let's add another empty console at right line. This will insert an empty line in between each round. So great, we've almost finished our game. The last thing to do is determine whether the player has won the entire game or not. Outside of our for loop, after our 10 rounds, let's use another if statement to compare the player's scores to the enemies. So if player points is greater than enemy points, console dot right line and you win. Else if the player points is less than enemy points console dot right line you lose and if the player's point is neither higher or lower than enemy points display a message saying it's a draw. And now that is all of the code finished, so let's test our game. When we press enter, we rolled a 4, and we rolled a 3, so we were in this round as we scored higher. And the enemy won this round as they scored higher, and their score has increased. 
So let's keep playing the rounds until we see the draw. Here we see a draw where it says we rolled six and we rolled six. It says a draw and neither scores have been increased. Then at the very end after the final round it says we lose. And we now have created our very own dice game in C Sharp. Finally in the description there will be a link to the blog post with all of the code fully commented and all of the steps also taken to get here in case you got lost along the way or just prefer a written version as well. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial and I'll see you in the next.